And a singer once rejected by Canadian Idol is now behind some of Bollywood's biggest hits. And years after that life-changing moment, she's released her debut EP. I picked up my baggage, looking for space. Didn't think it would fit in a new place. That is Brampton, Ontario's Jonita, and her song... It is what it is. Now, based in Mumbai, Jonita's genre-blending talents have reached millions of fans and taken her around the world. And Jonita Gandhi joins me now in studio. Hey! Hi! Good to see you again. Good to see you again. It's been a while. A long time. And now, here you are. How are you feeling right now with everything? I'm so excited and so nervous and so overwhelmed. <laughs> I'm like all of the things all at once, but overall just really thrilled. Talk to me about the journey to get to this point right now where you are, uh, because it started many, many years ago yeah. with a dream and, you know, here I you are. I think my journey has been quite atypical that way, actually. Yeah. Um, I kind of jet off to Mumbai and like spent 10 years there, sang through all the Bollywood films and Tamil films and regional films. And now I'm kind of finding my foot when it comes to my identity and writing my own music huh. and releasing my own project. So, um, I mean, I'd like to think that all those years I was collecting, you know, an arsenal of experience and skill. Yeah. And now I'm finally ready to kind of show the world who I am. And that's why it's really oh, nerve wracking. But. So what was it? What was that moment that changed where you're like, I'm ready for this now? Uh, I think it was a build up. It definitely wasn't an overnight realization. It was a past. It was a few years of just writing and just getting into studio with different producers, um, collaborating with songwriters, experimenting with sounds, and trying to figure out what do I resonate with the most. Yeah. And then there was a moment where I'm like, okay, this feels really good. Like out of all the songs that I'm making, like I I know which songs I want to kind of debut my sound with, and that's when I knew hmm. it's time. And I know that you came from musical upbringings. Your dad was actually music, uh, like he was an artist in Toronto, right? Yeah, he still plays gigs around Toronto. And yeah. what, is, what does he think about this now? He's the, he's the best. He's like the most proud father. We had a launch the other night, and he was the one with his hands up, holding his phone, recording every second. Shout out to Deepa Gandhi, my dad. <laughs> and my mom, like they're like the most supportive parents ever. So it really made it so smooth for me. You know, I, I was reading that you started like as a playback artist. Now, for folks at home that don't understand what a playback artist is, tell them what a playback artist is. So a playback singer in Bollywood is the person who sings the songs and then um, provides the voice basically for the actors on screen to lip sync to. But they're just as big sometimes as the actual... Yeah, person. I think yeah. over the years they've gotten bigger. Um, there was definitely a time where people don't typ didn't typically know what the singers looked like. They yeah. just knew who was on screen. And then even me, I, I was like, when I was young, I used to think that the actors were singing themselves. And then I realized, oh, there's someone else whose job is to just sing for that person, for yeah. that song. And then, um, yeah, over the years though now, I think a lot of playback singers are more in the limelight. So. Was it weird to kind of be behind the scenes? Or no? Um, it was kind of just like the nature of the game. So I kind of knew that that's part and par parcel with what I was doing. But I'm a performer and like I love being on stage. I love being in front of the camera. So there was definitely a little bit of like me wanting to be the face of my own voice. Yeah, and now you are. And yeah. You talk about, you know, blending American pop with Indian folk for the first time. Tell me a yes. little bit about that. What do you mean by that? Um, so my project is actually, I feel like, a mix of lots of different influences. I've grown up in Toronto. I've yeah. been in a mixed bag my whole life. Plus, I'm really rooted in my culture. I sing a lot of Hindustani classical. I sing um, film music in India. So what I wanted to do was kind of stay true to the fact that I'm so um, diverse and that my influences are so diverse. So this is kind of like Indian sounds meet Western pop, meet ghazal. It's like meets kavali. Um, meets R&B, meets like early 2000s sounds. Like it's, it's just like hard to describe. That's why I'm just kind of putting it under this pop category. Right, yeah, yeah. But I promise you when you hear it, you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Because okay. I feel like there's a little bit of everything. You mentioned R&B and we're bouncing back and forth between now and back then. But I, I, I also read a, a rumor that you were on a, a show and then you got canned because they didn't think you, you, you were an R&B artist. Um, yeah, that's kind of what went down. I was, they asked me, how do I identify? Canadian Idol, right? It's, it's Canadian Idol, just in case y'all By wondering. the way, I worked on that show. Was it you who told no, me to No, it was not me. me? <laughs> I'm kidding. 
But I was like 16 or something, yeah. and they were like, so what genre do you fit into? And I'm like, I'm an R&B artist. And then I started singing like the Fugees, and then they're like, on, on your profile, it says you sing in Hindi. And then I sang like a Bollywood song, and then it was, it was, it just got more and more confusing from there, naturally. Yeah. Because I sound very different when I'm singing like R&B versus when I'm singing like Indian, Indian music. Yeah. But like, again, that's something I worked through and I like cultivated into my own unique sound. And now in my music, now I feel like I have less of an identity crisis because I'm blending it not authentically and it's me. Well, and I mean, it, you know, like you say, right? Like your background, Toronto, you, you, you've been over to, to the Bollywood world. Yeah. I mean, Canada is such a, you know, a melting pot. Toronto, yeah. it's such a mosaic. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that comes through in the music. Talk to me about the EP Love Like That. Love Like That is a collection of four songs. They're all from the heart, from the soul. Um, the feature single is actually a collaboration with an incredible artist. His name's Ali Saiti. And it's just a lot of different sounds. It's a lot of um, pop meets my true Indian ethnicity. So I hope you guys like it. It's going to be something that I believe is very fresh and it's something you've never heard before. So Okay, nice. What was the reaction of your dad Did you when you first played it for My him? dad, <laughs> he loves all the songs. There's yeah. this one song where we've ta taken a Punjabi folk song called Madhaniya. Okay. And um, we kind of combined it with uh, English writing and we've applied the concept to a more general setting. Um, the, the folk song is about weddings. It's about the concept of being born to one and being taken away by another huh. as a woman. Okay. But we kind of applied that song to a greater, um, it's kind of across the board, it's, it's applicable to just growing pains in general. When you need to move forward in life, you have to leave something behind. And I think that's something relatable for everyone across cultures or across languages. So this song is definitely my parents' favorite. And every time they hear it, they get emotional because they think about you know, when your daughter gets married. Like, oh, wow. Which I'm not married yet, but <laughs> it's projection, I guess. <laughs> it, it's got to be a very proud moment for your family, it's, though, it right? Is, it is, yeah. They're so happy. I'm so happy that they're happy because making them proud is all we want to do, you know what I mean? So. Absolutely. And tell me what the reaction is like, you know, in India and what that, that's kind of like versus the Canadian audience. It's, it's different. Um, I think, so the thing that was challenging for me was to make music that I was really proud of and I felt like was really me, but also wouldn't alienate my existing audience. Because right. they're used to hearing me sing like your Bollywood hits. And I wanted to make sure that they could kind of relate and they felt like, oh, this is the Jonita that we've heard before, mm -hmm. even though they don't necessarily actually know who I am as, a, as an artist or as a person. Right. So um, this project I feel like is blending what Canadian audiences would like or global audiences would like, but also what my existing Indian audiences would like. You signed to a new label recently, which mandate is to support South Asian artists across borders. Talk to me about what it's like being with the label with that mandate. I think it's a really exciting time where South Asians now are getting exposure globally. The music is reaching countries that we never thought we would reach. And so being with a label, it's called 91 North Records. Mm -hmm. It's one of like the first of its kind actually. And it's literally the point of the label is to bring people like me on the global map. And I think that's really empowering because people like me who were born in India and then like brought up in Canada, again, we're kind of culturally confused. It's hard to kind of, um, figure out where our niche is in terms of our audience. So I think a label like this is definitely facilitating me being exactly who I am, but still being able to reach all the audiences that, I mean, I would hope I should. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's a really exciting um, time right now because this is, I feel like this is the first time this is happening. You, you know, you've talked before about the reach of Indian music globally. Is it surprising to you that so many people from different backgrounds connect with this genre? I don't think it's surprising at all. I think that um, it's like the immigrant experience is relatable for people across cultures, not just Indian or South Asians. So um, I think this is a long time coming. Um, it's been several years that we've been hearing about people globally speaking about Indian music and Indian culture, you know, from Slumdog. And it dates uh -huh. actually a while yeah. back that we've all kind of been, it's been on the radar. And I feel like it's about time that it's kind of being put more into the limelight. Yeah, well, it's, it, it certainly feels like it, it has been in the past couple of years. Uh, how do you expect the genre to grow, especially uh, with blending kind of North American pop sounds that you're doing? 
I think even within the Indian diaspora, it's everybody's so unique. Like all the artists, they, they're all, their music is so different. And so I think that there's so much scope to keep exploring. And I think that it's just going to keep growing and going. I mean, the numbers are speaking for themselves, honestly. If you see the streaming numbers of some of the... Oh, they're the Punjabi, insane. Yeah, yeah, the songs that are trending these days, they're like insane. So I feel like it's takeover time. <laughs> and, that's where, and that's where the audience is these days. Uh, Janita Gandhi, thank you so much for coming on Studio on Canada tonight. Thank you so much.